Okay, this is a 1958 Dodge swept side half ton and it's owned by Mark Minaret. Mark, uh, can you kind of tell us a little bit about this car, how rare it is and the, the color? It's a beautiful machine. Tell us something about it. Sure. Um, in 1957, uh, Dodge decided they wanted to compete with the uh, Ranchero from Ford and the, um, the Cameo from Chevy GMC. So the special equipment group got together, got a set of fenders from a Sierra station wagon, went to their uh, special uh, customizing facility that they had set up, grafted station wagon fenders onto the back of a half ton long bed pickup truck, and ta-da, you have the Dodge swept side. All these trucks were hand built from the uh, bed back they would pull this truck cab off of the assembly line, take it to the special equipment group, and hand assemble it uh, on its way out to the owner. I would tell you this would be a dealer demonstrator truck as well, but so many of these swept sides of the few they made were really high line trucks. Um, this one's a little bit above the rest because of the options it has. Power steering, power brakes, were probably the defining line on w how much your swept side would be worth versus another one. So um, this one also has a 315 Hemi motor in it where the majority had a 315 polyspherical engine. Well they actually made the blocks where they were dual purpose. You change out the heads, the water pump housing and the intake you have your different rods and pistons, but the block itself was set up to be either a Hemi or a Poly without having to do different tooling. So this one has the um, uh, optional fresh air induction. You can see they've got this uh, cast into the front plate. If you did not order it, there was a block off plate that went here. If you did, you've got this uh, fiberglass um, guidance tube that would connect to the uh, vent tube leading into the cab. So you would literally be having fresh air from uh, you know freeway speed rammed into the air com uh, the uh, driver's compartment, which was a nice addition in terms of options. Most trucks ended up with a block off plate. So you're not gonna see this entire setup uh, all that often uh, on any Dodge truck, let alone a uh, swept side, which are uh, a little more unusual and rare. Um, inside here you can see it's got the push button automatic transmission. And uh, this one also has the ancillary, um, a ga uh, the, what is it called, the uh, control deck pod. It has a A there for the fresh air system, H for heater, T is for throttle control, meaning you could adjust the carburetor uh, idle speed from inside the cab, and D is for defrost, which would deflect the uh, warm air up to your windshield. And we've got the, uh, uh, the gauge cluster, um, just it's a one year only. Uh, many people think this is the most beautiful Dodge truck gauge cluster from that era. Uh, they changed it uh, after 58 and 57 looked nothing like it. Uh, you've got your roof mount radio, the, the Model 700. That's another uh, you know, uh, item that uh, the Dodgers really look to for a Highline vehicle. It's got a, a glove box lock on it. Um, that's another surprisingly rare item is to have a, a, a handle with a lock built into it. Uh, the ashtray, um, another uh, unusual uh, item on the truck. You had to order all of that. Uh, of course, armrests, Highline interior. Uh, it's just uh, for a pickup truck that doesn't have a winch on it and no four-wheel drive, this thing has just about everything you could order on the interior for a two-wheel drive. So uh, there's, there's many arguments you could make that this very well may have been a dealer demonstrator and the person who ended up being the new owner bought it off the lot as is. Um, and Valley Green, you had mentioned uh, what an eye-popping color this is. Um, the chiffon green from the 50s era is one of the most beloved colors uh, on any vehicle. So having it on this truck, it, it's special and definitely gets attention. Now, the back of this uh, truck, look at these taillights, boy. I mean, you, Virgil Exner designed uh, just insanity. I mean, just look at the detail. 
uh, look like a jet engine on a pickup truck. Uh, well, this is the back end of a station wagon, believe it or not. That bumper is a station wagon bumper, and you can see the rubber pads. Let me lift the tailgate here. See these pads right here? Those are off of a station wagon when you drop the tailgate on a station wagon. Well, Dodge incorporated the tailgate from their pickup truck to use that same concept. They put a handle here and a latching mechanism inside, just like a station wagon. So no more hooks. None of the stuff you see on a pickup truck. They've got it incorporated in this hidden cavity here. Right. The swept side uh, also has this beautiful um, oak uh, planks in the bed with stainless uh, strips. Um, that's not particularly unusual for this era, but the quality of the finish on these bed strips is verging on maybe over restored. I mean, they're flawless and they gleam. Um, but I, that was done intentionally because this was designed to be a world beater at shows. So, uh, yeah, just really some unique uh, style points that uh, Dodge created um, by necessity to make this truck work. The tailgate, by the way, has been cut down. You can't reproduce that tailgate. They had to shave it to fit in between the bed and the station wagon fenders. So tailgates on swept sides are, are unlike any other size of any other Dodge truck. So you don't want to lose the one you've got. They have a, a, something that's interesting about these steps. That small individual step was only used on town wagons and swept sides. If you had a regular pickup from Dodge, it had this same dimple design, but it went all the way clear to the back of the rear fender. So this little short one was only used on two vehicles, a swept side and a town wagon, which makes them extremely hard to find and no one reproduces them. So uh, again, uh, take good care of the one you got. Hey, it's a beautiful truck. Thanks. Good? Yeah, just close it and we'll look at a final shot here.